today. If you need to know who I am, my name's Colton Witt. I do marketing and stuff. I was at a career fair in Athens, Georgia. Uh, heard everything went good. Um, but like I said, today is about celebrating the achievement that is completing this program and starting an awesome career. Um, we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to laugh. Uh, we're just going to, uh, like I said, we're just going to go through everything and just, just celebrate them. So with all that being said, uh, I'm going to pray and we're going to get started. Lord, um, we love you. We just thank you so much for the way that you take care of us and the way that you bless us. And, and I thank you for each of these guys um, that is graduating in this class. Um, I thank you for their families, everybody here that's here to support them. Um, and I just pray for them as they graduate tonight and start their careers. Um, you know, it's, it's, been a, uh, it's been a lot of work that they put into it, and I'm thankful for uh, the strength that you've uh, blessed them to be able to do it, and I just pray that you bless them with a great career. Um, just be with us this graduation and just help it to go well, and we love you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, so we're going to get started. Uh, before One of the things we're going to do is we got a little thing that we're going to do in a second where I'm going to bring a couple guys up, and we're going to do this little interview thing, and I'm going to tell you about it in a second. Before we do that, Waylon, if you'd come up, um, a lot of y'all, y'all came to the rodeo, um, and we had a competition, and we got winners. So we are going to reveal who won the rodeo today. So with that being said, take it away, Waylon. Um, I'll be really, really, really brief. Give me that mic. <laughs> yeah. I'll be really, really, really brief with you. Uh, I'm going to be short and sweet. We told you earlier at the rodeo we'd name the event winners and stuff. When I call your name, if you will hold your applause, we're going to get all these guys up here. Uh, we're going to do three event winners and then, of course, the overall winner. So when I call these guys' names, I'd say what, it's going to be easier for you to just give them a round of applause, and then I'll turn it back over to Colton, and we'll get going. You guys know, it's, especially these guys up front, they know it was raining and kind of messy and a little bit inefficient in how we did the rodeo. So, round of applause for the guy who won the arm pull, Mr. Christopher Benton. Congrats. Just hang out here, man. Uh... Round of applause for who won the egg climb, which is a speed climb event to see who's smoothest, Mr. Logan Pickard. Randy told him today before we got started over there, he said, somebody's going to leave here with that buckle, and for everybody else, all they get is a handshake, so congrats. <laughs> so for... Winner of Hurt Man, winner of the insulator change, winner of the overall and the buckle for class 2015 is Mr. Blake Brown. Blake won two events and obviously the overall that goes with that. Real brief explanation, he got a perfect score in the fastest time in all the events. Congrats, Thank Blake. You. Kudos. Good job, guys. Y'all can have a seat. Thank you. Okay, all right, now before I ask these two guys that are about to come up here to come up, I'm just going to tell you something, what's about to happen. So what we uh, have done, if you've come to one of our graduations here before, we normally have had like a video, it's like a funny video, where either we do some kind of skit, or guys are telling stories, funny stories about the class, poking fun at each other, poking fun at the instructors. Well, last class, it was... It was a scramble to get that together. And they didn't have great stories, but we had one student that was funny and then a bunch of students that were just, eh. And so, <laughs> and so what we did is uh, brought him up and uh, interviewed him on the stage. And we didn't do it in a video. We did it live in person. And it went pretty good. So we're going to do that again tonight uh, with uh, Brendan Swafford and Braden Horn. If you'd come up, please. Give them a big hand as they come up on the stage. <laughs> What's up, fellas? How's it going? It's going good. Yeah. We've had to get you the tall chair, uh, yep. Brian. I stand uh, out pretty Yeah. Stand out pretty bad. That's right. So, uh, so first off, Brayden, uh, Brandon, tell, tell everybody where y'all are from. So, I'm from Watkinsville, Georgia. Georgia. 
It's like right over by Athens, like an hour outside of Atlanta. Okay. I'm from Dawsonville, Georgia. Yeah. Uh, it's like an hour and a half from here. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so y'all couldn't drive here. Y'all had to stay in the house. And what was it like uh, living in the housing? Like y'all go and like hang out with the guys or anything? What was that like? Um, yeah, we, we, we didn't do much outside of school except like kind of prepare because CDLs took up most of our time. But when everybody was done with CDLs, we used to uh, – we went to the rec department in Tunnel Hill and played basketball. Connor. Connor, how you doing, bud? So Connor, Connor can play basketball. Connor's from, our guy from Wisconsin. Uh, he can play basketball. Connor. You know, being being six seven, you think he could, but mm -mm, he can't. <laughs> he called himself a shooter, but he really wasn't. Well, what happened? Explain. Well, well, Connor was actually the only person that actually played varsity basketball. And so the whole time we we were trying to find something to do. He's like, "Yeah, dude, but basketball. I'm I'm good at basketball. It's like I'm a sho I'm a shooter. I'm a shooter." <laughs> and so he's like, "Dude, we'll go buy a basketball." And so we ended up going and we went to like three or four different parks and couldn't find anything. So then we ended up at this one like right there next to the uh, Tunnel Hill Police Station, which is probably best because <laughs> <laughs> after because and so we got there. It was getting kind of dark, and we were kind of just shooting around, whatever. And there was this kid, and he was maybe 13, 14, probably four foot nine. Uh, he was something else to look at. He was like a little leprechaun, and uh, he was quick though. He was quick, and there was I forget. There was like five of us, and so I went up. I was like, "Yo, you want to play with us?" He's like, "Yeah, I'll play." <laughs> that was bad. That was a mistake because we started playing, dude. And, yeah, he was just going crazy. I'll, yeah, I'll let you talk about that. Like, that's bad. <laughs> yeah, everybody was doing pretty good. And Connor, you know, he he was on man to man. He was getting sauced. By a four foot guy. How tall yeah. is Connor? Um, Too tall to not be getting a, sauced not a, on by a four foot yeah, guy. I mean, yeah, I don't really yeah. even know. He, uh, yeah, it was not good. Okay. All right. Well, let's move on back to the like to the school. So obviously, y'all went through the training and, and starting out, y'all starting the classroom. What was it like in the classroom every day? Um. I feel like I was a, a little bit of like a, what do you call those people that, like therapist? A ther kind of? therapist. Yeah. Okay. You're, yeah. you're a psychoanalyst. Yeah. A psychoanalyst. Yeah, one of them. Explain. One of them people. Explain. What do you mean? He's just trying Explain to read. Explain what you're talking about. Because, you know, where's Randy at? Ah. Uh, uh, I think he's got DID. Dissoci what's, the, what's, what's DID? Dissociative Identity Disorder. <laughs> well, what, 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 explain. He'd come in. It, it depended on a phrase that he said every morning. It was either good morning, gentlemen, and that was a good day. That was a great day. You know, happy Randy, get along with everybody. And then if he came in and he said morning, whew, I just started crying. <laughs> <laughs> so what else? Is there any other um, versions of Randy? Uh, there's, well, you got dancing Randy. That's a pretty good one. And then... Um, you got like combat vet, like aggressive, Randy. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, dude, yeah. like, he, yeah. I mean, he don't know. Like, he come up to you, and you'll be like talking to him. He'll shake your hand. Next thing you know, he's going for look, like an elbow jab, <laughs> and he, he thinking he's gonna run you through with his hand. Like he swore this, he was like a like a spear. Like he, like he was gonna run you through with that right there. He get that strong hand on you. Yep. It's, it's that old lineman hand. And then you got <laughs> you got storytelling, Randy. That was uh, that was pretty good. A lot of scary stories. A lot of death. Really bad. A lot of death. Yeah, not good. <laughs> yeah, a lot of death. So someone dies yeah. in all these stories? Yeah, it pretty much revolves around death. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's either dying or wants to die. Yeah, <laughs> yeah pretty I much. I don't know. Well, there's another instructor in that room. Tell us about him. Uh, Shane, he just kind of is like a basset hound. <laughs> he just sits around and he'll bark every once in a while, but, you know, usually he's just watching. Yeah. Randy's more of like a... <laughs> and then you get... And then Shane... <laughs> You know, and it's just, it's just like once yeah, every now yeah. and then, man. But it's like, I mean, it's quality and it's good. Like, I'm not going to discredit him. But yeah, it's just a lot more reserved. It, he saves it. He saves it for sure. Okay. okay and let, let's, let's move on to, um, to outside. So, obviously, one of the big things, you probably spend most of your time training outside more than the classroom, really. So, w being out in the pole circle, uh, what was that like for you guys? Well, it was, it was good. And then once it got better as we started getting more comfortable with each other. Because, I don't know, we'd like cut up more on top of the pole, try to keep our mind off of it, like hurting. Because everybody there was kind of hurting in their arms or legs or whatever. So we kind of came up, we just, you know, I like to hum, like in my head, like a song or something. And he would sing, so, and I'd get to singing. What kind of songs would y'all sing? 
Uh, anything from like country to rap to like Mexican music, it was pretty good. Like, <laughs> man, if, if it has lyrics, we were singing it. Yeah, I mean, so I who, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So who all sang? It was me, him, Isaac, Matt, and then uh, Bailey occasionally. Yeah, it was kind of like a hit or miss. It was more of like a uh, you had like um, it was like your backbones. And then you just got all your limbs, you know, everybody else kicking in to make the make it yeah. all work. Oh, so you had yeah. the, y'all were the lead yeah. vocalists uh-huh. and you had yeah. like, like... It was like some, backup singers for backup sure. Backup singers. Yeah. Every like, now and again, depending yeah. on the song. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they kind of come in and fill in the lyrics where we forgot them. Okay, yeah. cool. Yep. Um, yep. Well, let's go to our last part of this. Um, let's end here. Um, one of the most important places you have to spend time at our school, because if you don't get a CDL, odds are you're not getting the job. So... At the CDL lot, you had three instructors you dealt with. Talk about them. What was it like dealing with those three? The dog pound. The, <laughs> That's what that was. They need to have a beware. Well, uh, we'll introduce each one. So, okay. so let's start. We got Keith over here. Raise your hand, yep. Keith, real, t- real high. There's Keith. All let's right, start with ahead. Keith. Keith's like a bulldog. He just kind of, he don't really bark much. He just kind of, like, he'll talk occasionally, and when he talks, he just cuts you to the bone, and you don't know it. But he's like, you think he's cutting up with you, but it's, like, really deep, and it hurts. I've never been so close to crying from somebody talking to me with a smile on their face. Like, I'm not even, dude. I was like, yeah. But yeah, he was like, man, that was, that was terrible. Like, dude, like, like that's probably the most hurtful thing. Like, you know, but you just, he's just so happy about doing it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, I don't know. It's probably just that government backbone working at the DMV. You know, he just, he don't care. He just got to make sure that you don't catch it, I reckon. I don't yeah. Know. Okay. He's sneaky. Okay. Well, and then our other one, where's Joseph Burridge at? Where's he at? There he oh, is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Joseph's like a, uh, like a golden doodle. <laughs> like Brendan, Brendan told me, he said, Joseph is like, he's sweet and all, and he just barks a lot, and he, sometimes it gets a little annoying. You're just like, will yeah. you get away from me? <laughs> well, yeah. Quit barking and licking. He's always pretty, though, dude. Like, he's always got his hair made, you know, fresh shaved. Like, oh, he, yeah. Like, he's never looked bad. Like, that's just, that's a, that's a pretty dude. <laughs> so he's just, like, I'm just like, I go over there, and he's like, that's like a show dog. You know, he's a, he's a show dog of the CDL lot for sure. Yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. And then there's one more dog uh, that y'all are going to talk about. <laughs> well, y'all are going dogs. I'm not, look, I'm about to get eaten alive. <laughs> With all due respect, with all due respect. All, yeah, with all due respect, that's where we're going with all three. Go to our next one. Uh, so, Kimbra is the other instructor. Go ahead and stand up for everybody. Yeah, you give everybody, yeah, yeah go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, she's like a chihuahua. Yeah. Like the small, like the short, the height fits. And, the, like, she's just small. And then, you know, she barks a lot. And she will probably bite you. And, you know, she's pretty mean. She's, like, mean all the time. Like, are, are you nervous even saying that? To yeah, like, I feel like I might get pimp slapped. Like, <laughs> you got anything here? I don't even know what to add. Like, that was pretty good, though. Yeah, but, I mean, it's just going over there. And, you know, I think, like, it's like kind of like Joseph is the show dog. Like, she thinks she's the show dog. But, like, really, like, dude, she just got all the bite. I mean, she's, she's there. She's there to hurt. Yeah, a lot of, lot of bark and bite. It, but, I mean, I ain't going to knock her, though. Like, well, she, she's, uh, she's good at what she does. And, like, I, yeah. like you know, I'm, I'm grateful for her. And, like, I'm grateful for her bluntness because, you know, it drives, you know. It's, it's less of, like, a, like a push direct. It was more of, like, a shove. Like, you need to be going this way. Yeah, she shoved you all over the place. Yeah, and, it, I mean, it helped, though, because, I mean, everybody here got them. So, She's also not afraid to like jerk you out of the truck too. Like, <laughs> like if you spent if you spent too long in the truck, like she's yelling, "Get out!" Like she's screaming that over and over and over until you get out. But okay. he knows about it, isn't that right, Bailey? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, very good. That's all we got for these guys. Give them a big hand. All right, now for our opening remarks, put your hands together again for Randy Annunziata. Hello. Hey. Let's move this thing out of here. That's kind of a hard act to follow. Usually I'm up first, and... Scratch pad, 
if everybody out there could see what I just saw, you'd probably laugh. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for showing up tonight to come out here. And um, this group of, of young men, I think you need to stand up, okay? Everybody stand up here. Come on, let's give them a hand. Let's give these guys a hand. They deserve it, folks. They really do. I got the book. So the first really do. Is, um, All right, sit down or I'll take you back to the school. We'll climb poles. Class 15, I'm really proud of you guys. Usually I write a speech. Tonight I'm going to wing it. I'm just going to go with whatever comes out. And most of you guys know that's pretty dangerous when I, when I just go, right? So I'm going to try to be civilized tonight. Um, no, I, I think this class 15 really came together. In the beginning, it was tough. We started losing students. We had a couple of injuries. But once we cleared house, the group that's here came together, and they really prevailed. They really worked together well, some quicker than others, but they all came together well. I, I had some good leaders in here and a lot of good followers, okay? Stand up, helicopter. Look, look at his hairdo. I, this is good. I, I've been looking at this thing for like 11 weeks, and you should see him when he comes in at the end of the day. It's usually out two more feet, and I just keep waiting for that motor to start up and start going around because it, it's, it's civilized tonight, but looks good. Looks good. I'm proud of you. Sit back down now. We're done with you. Okay. So, no, the, these, these guys here really did an awesome job. Here at Elite, we kind of march to a different beat. Um, we're not the type of school where you just come, you pay your money, and you graduate. You've got to earn it, right, guys? You have to earn that title, Elite. That's why when they graduate, our students are usually hired pretty quick. They show up every day, and they go to work. And that's what we concentrate on for 11 weeks, is to take these students and turn them into a productive, working individual to go out there and to be able to make a good living and make an impact on the community. And we put a lot of time into these students, Waylon, uh, Biblical with David, uh, financial, myself and Shane with our experience in line work. We put a lot of time into them. It's not always easy. Yeah, we have the good cop, bad cop, and it's fine. I like being the bad cop. But you know what? We get the message across, and we get the job done. So they go out there, and they work hard. So normally I talk forever up here, so I'm just going to keep it kind of short tonight because we've got a lot to do. But I just want to tell these guys and you folks that have sent these young men to us, thank you for giving us a chance to turn their lives around. And I feel like that's what we do here. That's our specialty is that we're not just a school. We're here to turn your lives around. So some of you, I know you hated me, but that's okay, because I know at the end the hurt turns into love. And we, we, we build a bond that they know they can reach back out to us years down the road. That's what we build here. So if I've gotten your face and I yelled at you or threatened to kill you, because I have, okay, they know that really from the bottom of my heart, that I care about them, and the school cares about them. That's what makes us different, is that we go the extra mile here, myself, Shane, and all of the staff, Whale, and everybody that's associated with this school will go the extra mile to make sure these young men have the best advantage when they leave here. And they know that when they get out there, that if they have a problem, a question, if they need help financially, 
spiritually, they can come back to the school and they can talk to us because we're always here. We don't graduate a class. We take them into our family. So this is class 15 into our family. So I want you guys to go out there and make myself, the rest of the staff, your parents, your friends, make everybody proud and have a good life out there. God bless all of you. Thank you. Joseph Burridge with the CDL Award. Give him a big hand. Making sure it was on. Uh, good evening. My name is Joseph Burridge. Uh, I'm the lead CDL instructor at Elite. And I just kind of wanted to begin tonight with saying that uh, this has been the first class ever that come through Elite that every student passed pre-trip first time. And, and I just really appreciate that. That was a lot of hard work that y'all put in. But tonight, uh, I'll be giving out the CDL award. So I get the pleasure to spend time with each and every one of the students um, through training them with the CDLs. And when I do the award, it's not based on the student's ability to drive, but the drive that's in the student. And the one that, that uh, I'm giving the award to had put in more time than any student ever to get his pre-trip, to get his driving, and, and it was just through that sheer dedication that he was able to pass. And I thank him for that, and it's Michael Cartmill. Good job, Cartmill. Yeah. Blue. Yep. Back right. to Shane and Colton. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. So everybody, this is uh, this is where the uh, the fun begins. Um, so Shane, you doing okay? You nervous? <laughs> I always get nervous at at this point. All right. Well, um, what's about to happen? Um, and we're going to go ahead and call the staff. All the staff, if you, you just come up and get in your positions. And um, what we're go about to do is we're about to give out certificates and superlatives. This Funny. is just like all these guys. You tell them they need to do something and they don't move. So y'all come on. So while they're coming up, I will say just like Randy did, all these guys back here in the back, moms and dads and grandparents, thank you for supporting these guys while they're here at our house. Um, and just know because they will get – and a crew probably, and they will be the dumbest human being on the planet for a little while, and it's okay. But they can always call us when they're ready to quit, whatever, because it'll be pretty rough. That's just the way line work is. But just know that we got their back, too. You support them, we got them also. So they can call us when they think this is the dumbest thing they've ever done with their life. So, And what we're about to do is – Funny superlative. So back in class one, we, we've been doing this the whole time we've been doing graduation. So essentially, if you know superlatives, like when you're in high school, most likely to succeed, best dressed, most popular, different ones. What we're doing here is we're essentially making fun of them, okay? <laughs> For lack of a better way of saying it. Uh, David told me, he said, some of these are cold, Colton. I was like, really? So sometimes we kind of cross the line, just know, like Shane always says, they helped us, this is them, so be mad at your classmates if we say something that hurts your feelings, it's not me and Shane, it's, it's these guys, but, uh, this could easily end up being the Oscars, yeah. I hope somebody doesn't come up here and slap our face, yeah, that's right, yeah, it could, one of the, it's coming, one of these days, we're gonna make some mama mad, one She's of these days, yes, here. um, all right, so Shane's got our first one. All right, so this first guy right here, this is, this is easy for me. Um, and I, Yeah, we should just go ahead and show that first picture. <laughs> All right, so I think I'm pretty sure everybody that is sitting on these front roads has got a picture somewhat like that on their phone because this individual is like, of course, 
I'll probably mention that, that gets asked if you go by, by wearing a hard hat. It's easy for me to say, yes, you do. <laughs> so everybody started taking a picture. And, of course, you see when we're in the climbing circle for a good majority of the time, there's a little bond that goes on. And then there's somebody that's climbing a pole right back here behind him that says, hey, you're going bald. Then it goes south from there. We're taking pictures every day. Is my bald spot getting worse? So this is, this is our head right now. Maybe four years from now, five years. <laughs> That's from wearing a hard hat. <laughs> so most likely to be in a Rogaine commercial <laughs> is Eli Smith. Yeah. I'm glad you wore a hat. Yeah, you can, you can stand on the cooler if you need to. I just want to say it's not even a bald spot. It's just how my hair lays. But <laughs> That's what I say. <laughs> you can pull it off, though. I just want to say thank you to Elite for changing who I am. Uh, I don't know where I'd be right now if I didn't go to Elite. I want to thank all my classmates. Actually, my brothers, because, I mean, we built a bond. Even... People I didn't talk to, we all got close eventually. I just want to say thank you to all the instructors, even though they kind of harassed me a little bit about my bald spot. Uh, it's really not, but. <laughs> yeah, Randy kind of made me want to hurt myself a few times, but. Oh, we don't talk about that. It's all good now. We're here. Um, this school has really changed my life, and I would do it again if I could. I'm going to miss being here, miss going to school every day. I never thought I'd say that. Um, but yeah, and I just want to thank you all, all the office ladies, they were great, they made everything so much easier, they made us feel loved when Randy made us feel hated, <laughs> um, but yeah, that's all I got, thank y'all. Okay, all right. So, for our next one, so um, Randy is one of the most interesting people in the world. I'm not going to go through everything Randy's done in his life. We're not going to go there. But one thing that Randy has done is he has ran a sandwich shop at one point in his career. He owned a sandwich shop, and um, Larry's Giant Subs in, in uh, Jacksonville. Jacksonville, Florida. So, um, there is another guy in this class that loves sandwiches. He has his own uh, deli meat slicer, um, and he slices his own deli meat. So um, with that being said, and let's show the picture real quick. There we go. <laughs> Most likely to open up a Larry's Giant Subs, Jesse Williams. about the only thing I eat for lunch about every day. Uh, sometimes, if I'm hungry, nine o'clock rolls around. Well, uh, appreciate y'all for coming. Proud of y'all, boys. And thank y'all, all the instructors. Even though y'all pushed me, taught me how to work out of a bind, and in the climbing circle, I didn't think I'd miss this place, but I will. But hey, I'm proud of y'all. We out of the circle. We did it. Let's go make some money, go to work. Yeah. All right, so this next one. Now listen, I'm from Alabama. I can't spell too good, so you can listen the way I talk, so. This next guy, we usually do a, along the line in the afternoons, we do a start, stop, continue. 
and it gives a very good opportunity for you to stick out like a sore thumb when you cannot spell. Are we going to hammer you because you can't spell? Absolutely. <laughs> and we're going to have a blast. So, Shoemake, you come up here a minute. <laughs> you get to stand right here in the front. Yeah, so what we have here, and Waylon, what do you got in your hand? You, 40 uh, bucks. 40 bucks. Stand, look at the crowd. You cannot look at these screens. If you do, right. like, it's over. You get nothing. All right? So we got three words. These are not easy <laughs> words, but they're not like, they're common words. You've, yeah. you've probably said these words, okay? Yeah. So um, you've definitely have said these words. So, like, we're going to go through. You have three words to get, okay? Right. And you get 40 bucks. All right? You ready? Yeah. Okay. First word. Mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> We could be done early. Let's go ahead. Dude, I don't even know where to start other than the end. <laughs> first uh, letter. Let's go first letter. M A M A N A. <laughs> it's over. It's done. Give me my hand. So, you just stay right here. So we gave him a hard time. You get in front of a bunch of people that really don't know you a whole lot. Yeah, that's it. It's a why, yeah. So he 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 was Mayo. able Mayo. on this start stop continue day. I think he was able to misspell every word that was on that board. So it just turned into hey, you just write something down and we will figure out what it means. So, most likely to lose a spelling bee, Matthew Shoemake. Goes right. So, uh, yeah, I can't spell. Uh, in high school, we were supposed to do membean, and... Uh, I figured out if you just took a zero for the whole year and you uh, passed your final with a 20, you would pass it. So that's what I did. <laughs> uh, I guess it came back to get me, but uh, good thing in line work, you only got to count to three in ABC. So, <laughs> but I, I'm really shocked I'm even up here because I never thought we was going to get off the pole circle. Uh, I swear it was the 11 weeks was spent there, but I'm very proud of every one of y'all. I'm glad of the, the friendships we made and, uh, very thankful to all the instructors, you know, Mr. Randy for uh, pushing me with some nice words, <laughs> and uh, Mr. Whalen for giving us wisdom of his mind, you know, Mr. Shane French for my questions when I was too scared to go to Randy, <laughs> uh, Kimbra for constantly stabbing me and threatening me, uh, but it was all good, you know, she's, good. she's a good girl, uh, Joe for letting me burn the clutch out in his Rio. <laughs> Uh, Keith for calling me stupid for cutting the truck off during regen. Uh, you know, Mr. David for making me feel like a terrible person for the things I've done, but give me... <laughs> it, all, it, it was very good. Uh, and then Colton for, you know, he's just a smart, good guy. I like talking about baseball with him, so that was good. And then Mr. Mark, but I don't know where he's at. I don't think Mark's here tonight. Oh, well, yeah, Mark too. And then obviously the office ladies had some good lunches and some good talks. They are like, kind of like mom during school because... You couldn't go gripe to the instructors, but you could go gripe to them. So it was pretty good, but uh, I'm proud of all of y'all. Now let's go make money. Good job, Sean. That was a good one for us to get slapped on, Colton. Okay. Oh, this one's a good one for slapping? No, that, that, that one was. Yeah. Okay, so this next one, um, we'll see how this one goes. Um, so this individual, uh, how, how many uh, have gone in this room, you've gone to college? Not necessarily graduate, but you've gone. Okay, all right. So raise your, keep your hands up if you graduated. Okay, good bit of you did graduate. Okay, just checking. All right, so this person did not graduate college, just want to be clear. But, um, <laughs> uh, but most likely to quit line work in three years like he did college. <laughs> Matthew Wojcik.
<laughs> no, it's all good. Okay. No, line work's definitely one I'm going to stick out. I'm not going to quit like I did college. But uh, I want to thank all the instructors uh, coming to Elite. They're very genuine, very authentic. They actually care. Uh, you can see that day in, day out, that they truly want to better your lives. Uh, thank all the CDL instructors. Uh, Kimber, you almost made me cry. <laughs> but Kimber especially. I had a special bond with Kimber. All the office ladies, thank you. You're there for us when we needed them. Uh, you care for us, uh, all you guys. I uh, thank my friends, family, all the support. I uh, love all y'all. Thank you. All right, so this next guy, <clears throat> we'll usually give him, you know, a 10 or 15 minute break when we're in the classroom with the intent of them, if they need to go get a drink, whatever, go use the restroom or whatever. So this one guy, every time we would get back in, I'd look around, and where in the world is he at? So he'd wait till like three minutes before the time to be back in the classroom, he'd walk to the bathroom. There's a really high possibility he is probably in the restroom right now. There you are. <laughs> so most likely to be in the bathroom right now, but he's not, thank goodness, is Logan Pickard. Good job, I just want to say thank you for everybody at Elite. Uh, thank you to all the people. You know, we pushed each other to be the hardest, and we finally did it and graduated, and it's time to go make some money. Good job. Good job. Okay, so, um, well, for one, I just um, made fun of a guy for not finishing college, and now I'm about to make fun of a guy for only having one good eye. So, um, <laughs> we'll just go ahead. You gave yourself these I today. did give myself these, uh, so we're just going to go with it. Um, but here's the deal. So, just, I'm not going to go the long story with this, but he, like, there were some issues with the, with the DDS. He was able to get a permit, but then some lady said, you can't take your test because you only have one good eye. And then, and then, lo and behold, so that became a theme. People started calling him Cyclops and different stuff. Um, so with that being said, I'm sorry. Um, most likely to play Mike Wazowski in a live action Monsters, Inc. movie. Here we go. On your screen. Jacob Short. Here he comes. So, um, I'm not blind. <laughs> Can't watch a 3D movie. Found that out this uh, 11 weeks. But it's been the best 11 weeks I've ever had. Made a lot of good friends. Um, buddies I'll probably talk to for hopefully the rest of my life. Um, I really think that we're all going to have a great career. And, I mean, hopefully we all stay safe. I'll never forget that Isaac, we walked into school one day and he asked Randy, uh, when are we going to do our ocean climb? <laughs> it was about 7.15, and, yeah, we was on the post about 7.25. So that was, that was a good day. But uh, I thank the CDO instructors a lot. They helped me through everything, especially, yeah. Yeah, yeah we'll just send that there. Um, I thank Randy and Shane and Waylon. Uh, couldn't have better instructors and couldn't have came to a better school. But, you know, good luck to everybody. Love y'all boys. Good job. He did tell me earlier in the class, he said, well, I did go watch a 3D movie, and I was wondering why I paid so much extra money for a 3D movie, and I thought it was just the same. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll find out that some of these guys will have, either have a good story, we, we may not, but it's all in love, because we this all these stories that we're telling, we've hammered a lot through the 11 weeks, so it's okay, Colton. All right, so this next guy, I remember him coming in uh, 
orientation. We get they come in, they have to be at orientation. Then we give them their shirts and uh, hats and all that kind of good stuff. So you have to try on the shirts, make sure we give you the right size. Um, so I remember him trying on one of the shirts. He's had on a t-shirt, and that thing was super tight. I mean, he's cut up a little bit, so it's okay. Wish I this is, does not need to wear a tight shirt. I tell you that, not in, on purpose anyway. Um, so this is gonna be mean. I didn't do this one. This was your buddies, by the way. So most likely to wear his girlfriend's jeans. <laughs> Noah Lunsford. <laughs> They're not even that tight. But, uh, <laughs> no, I just want to thank everybody for uh, coming out. Um, I really appreciate it. All of us, I know, appreciate it. Um, I want to uh, thank all the students. You know, I came in, you know, not knowing hardly anybody except me. Um, you know, I got extremely close to a lot of, almost all of y'all. So, uh, you know, I hope I stay in touch with y'all the rest of my career. Um, I also want to thank all the instructors. Uh, you know, uh, they really helped push us from everybody, you know, that was uh, out there with us, you know, Shane and Randy, even though Shane or Randy was uh, threatening to climb up the pole and, like, kill you almost every 10 seconds. <laughs> but, um, and also uh, the workers, you know, uh, or, uh, oh, <laughs> uh, no, um, yeah, no, all the ladies, you know, that work, you know, they really, you know, whenever we, um, you know, needed somebody to talk to, or, you know, during lunch, they would come over there and talk to us, you know, even though, you know, Randy was being mean most of the time, they'd come over there and we'd go talk to him, so, but yeah. All right, well, um, I appreciate all y'all coming out, and thank y'all so much. Okay, so this next guy, um, this is a very interesting what I'm about to tell you guys. Uh, a lot of y'all are about to learn something. I did not know this was a thing, okay? Now, um, this is apparently really big in China. Um, this is a sport. And this, there's a student in our class that participates in this sport. And um, so who's in the room has heard of pigeon racing? Anybody? <laughs> Few people. Okay, cool. Hey, I don't think it's a bad thing at all, but pigeon racing's a thing. And this guy participates in pigeon racing. So let's show our picture here. I don't, I don't know if you can tell who the person on this pigeon is, but that is Kevin Schwetner. So most likely to spend his storm check on a pigeon, Kevin Schwetner. No, uh, pigeon racing is different, I know, but I always tell these guys that I'm going to retire by 35. Uh, win a big race and sell pigeons for a living, so hopefully I don't spend all my lineman money on that. So, But I appreciate everything. Uh, Leeds has been great. Met a lot of great people. I came down from St. Louis, so being in the South, it's pretty cool. Learned a lot about guns. And <laughs> and Georgia's awesome for guns, but, but no, thank you. Good job, kid. Oh, geez. I'll try to be easy with this one. Okay, um, this, is a, this is a Photoshop one, yeah. Yeah. We got a picture for this one, too. So, um, <laughs> this is very easy. So, we got one guy. His family is in line work. So, we gave him a really hard time about, you know, working at Carroll MC or whatever it was. So, then he become foreman and then all this kind of stuff. So, and, and there's two or three guys in here that's been around it or has saw some of it just a little bit, so you know enough about it to ask a lot of questions, so, which is okay. But I told him one day, I said, you look like a guy on the plier. So what you guys in the back don't really don't know is on a pair of lineman's pliers, there's a picture of a guy climbing a pole, a pole with a guy on it. 
And when, it, when one of these guys are climbing it, they always hear it on the line, crack, you look like the guy on the pliers. That's what they say. So uh, this is most likely, we got a, we got a picture right here. Ta the tattoo. The tattoo. The tattoo reads putting the fire in the wire, if you can't read that. But, um, so one of our terms is don't let the smoke out. So if you let the smoke out, somebody's got hurt or it's going, something's bad. So he's putting the fire in the wire. So most likely get a lineman tattoo. It's Bailey Harrelson. I just want to say thank you to everybody at Elite for all the support and everything. And then especially thank you to Kimber and Joe for pushing me through my CDL since I failed it the first time. <laughs> and then Randy and Shane for putting us in a bind and then make us learn how to work out of it. And then Waylon for all of his wisdom. And all the office ladies for helping us whenever we needed to ask a question or two. Worried about going to Randy or the rest of them about it. So I just want to say thank y'all for coming. And that's it. Okay, so for this next guy, um, we weren't even sure if we were going to be able to do this at first, but we talked to him about it, and we got the green light, so we are good. Uh, but uh, sometimes, sometimes one's a little iffy. I mean, you, and some of these you've heard are already kind of iffy, and we didn't ask, so, but this one I did. Um, so this particular person, uh, talking to guys in the house, we get to, when we come up with these superlatives, we get to learn a lot about these guys that we didn't necessarily know. Like, obviously, when we started doing these superlatives, I didn't know the whole thing about the pigeon racing thing with Kevin. But got to learn that. And then we also learned that we got a gambler in this group. Um, he, he loves sports. I'm a big sports fan. I love sports. But he loves to put some money down on it. And um, so with that being said, there's really not anything to say other than that. Um, we didn't know if we were getting a cat out of the bag, if his family didn't know or something. So, um, But you, anyway. You do now. They do now. <laughs> they do now. Um, so <laughs> most likely to lose a bet on Kevin's pigeon. <laughs> Tyler Chappelle. <laughs> if you need a ride home, I'll get you there somehow. <laughs> Nah, I'm definitely going to be betting on Kevin's pigeons, for sure. <laughs> you just let me know whenever you get them. But, nah, I just want to say thank you for everybody coming out. Tonight, uh, thank you to all of my classmates. Y'all are great. Thank you to the, everybody here at Elite. It was, uh, it was a time, to say the least, but now that we're uh, moving on to the next stage of our life, so let's go. So the deal is, in the classroom, uh, if they bring, they can, we, we let them bring some snacks in. They can, as long as they bring enough for us. Randy likes to just kind of stroll, stroll around and eat snacks, and if they're not Sample. open, yeah, make sure they're safe for your kids. Is what he does. Um, so this guy, for, he sat right here in the front, right here, and always had a bag of orange lifesavers, orange flavored lifesavers. Yep. You need to buy stock in Lifesaver. Two bags a week? That's a lot of Lifesavers. So most likely to choke to death on an orange Lifesaver <laughs> is Bailey Sailors. I ate a few of them myself, by the way. Yeah, uh, usually brought some in on Monday morning, bought them Sunday night, and we all had them gone Monday at 4 o'clock. I was like, what the heck, where'd they go? And each one of them has probably tried one of them. Um, Elite was fun. Didn't know if it was for me when I tried. 
Uh, these men and women, they pushed me through it. Uh, these brothers that I now have, they're there with me. Uh, I enjoyed it. Enjoyed it with all y'all. Blood, sweat, and tears. Um, like he said, pole circle at 7.15, and we didn't get off until 4.45. Um, it was a long day, Randy. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'd like to say thank you to Randy. He pushed me further than I thought I could be pushed. Uh, Waylon and David, uh, they made me a better spiritual man, made me learn more about myself. Um, I feel like I developed in a way that I never thought I could. Uh, Shane, for always being somebody you could talk to, because like everyone said, Randy's kind of scary to ask questions. Uh, <laughs> Colton was always good to talk to. Uh, enjoyed every conversation. Uh, Kimbra, I ain't even got to look at her. She is funny. She's a good one. Um, she always calls me Baby Bailey. Um, don't know where it came from, but she rolled with it, so it was always funny. CDL Joe, he had a smile. He pushed us all the time, but he made sure we got everything done. Keith, he is quiet, but man, he smiled every time you looked at him, so if you needed a happy face, you knew. Uh, Miss Amy and Miss Jordan, Miss Stephanie, Miss Kelly, they listened to us. Um, they were everything we ever needed. If we needed a hug, they were the first one to give it to us. Uh, it, was, it was great on certain days. But I thank everybody for coming, for being out here. Boys, it was great. Uh, love all y'all. Uh, let's go make some money. Okay, so this next guy, uh, Jordan actually got me a list of things this guy uh, claims he can do. So, uh, but as I forgot to bring it up here, but I'm going to go through the things off the top of my head that I remember from it. So, um, this particular person who you've already seen today uh, on the stage earlier, uh, he can, he, he is said to be, can do karate, he can sing, he can swim, he's played quarterback. He's played tennis. He's played baseball. Um, I'm probably missing a lot of things. Uh, he's been in chorus. Um, all kinds of stuff this guy can do. Um, so give it up for Brendan Swafford, most likely to be a contestant on America's Got Talent. There you go. And he sh can shake his hips like Shakira, I think. Oh, yeah, I forgot His that. hips don't yeah. lie. I'm not real big on public speaking, you know, um, and I've been known to tell some tales, but I'll tell you one thing, I ain't never told a lie, and <clears throat> if it wasn't for the time thing of me trying to get hold of one of them Carhartt bags, I'd probably sing you a little piece, but, you know, I just want to thank everybody here, thank all the instructors and all the office staff, um, you know, and all the people that were behind me getting through this, you know, they really pushed me. Found out a lot about myself, and especially a lot of little counseling uh, with the office staff. Except Amy. I don't know where she's at. Me and her are beefing. She, uh, she likes to smart off about how she ain't going to miss me. So we're going to hold that as a grudge. And, you know, me and Randy always poking fun about um, beating each other up or whatever, and I always joked about karate and this and that. But um, about 8.30, if you want to meet me at 3746 Lake Catherine Road, <laughs> I'm going to show you what that karate is about. I just got to get this certificate first. But uh, I just want to thank y'all. All right, so in our task, as you saw today, in the, if you made it to the, the rodeo, one of the tasks is hurt man rescue. So they climb. They do a lot of rigging with the rope. Um, the idea behind that is you wrap the rope around something to make friction where the guy or dummy does not slide a thousand miles an hour to the ground. We can say it a hundred thousand times, we can watch videos, we can watch somebody else not do the right thing and you're going to have somebody that does it. So most likely, and what happens with that is you try to catch that rope, mm -mm. It gets like 8,000 degrees instantly on your hand, and it's like hot glue that does not cool off. You can't get the leather glove off your hand. It's just there hot, and you look like an idiot when you do it. So most likely to get charged with involuntary manslaughter is Nick Freeland.
Yeah, he let the dummy hit wide open. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that rope's pretty hot. Um, you definitely cannot hold that dummy up with one hand. Um, definitely got a big old burn mark across that glove. And then uh, Randy says, you're stupid. <laughs> and then <laughs> and he's like, you better get it right the next time or you're going to do 50 laps with that uh, dummy across the property. And, um, but today uh, I did my best time, 109 on that. So uh, definitely improved on that. Um, just want to thank all the staff. Uh, made me the man who I am today. Um, and to all the guys, made some good friends. I wish y'all the best of luck. Um, be safe out there. Watch out for yourselves. And definitely uh, watch out for your crews. And uh, let's get to work. Make some money. Okay. So this next one's pretty good. Um, so obviously the one I just did was, uh, was Brendan. And earlier, you know, we were up here. It was Brendan and Braden together. And those two are, like, tight. They're together all the time. They're sitting together right now. They're always talking to each other. And with that being said, I just have, uh, you already know who it is, uh, Braden. So you, this is you. Um, the guy sitting next to you actually came up with this, by the way. Uh, <laughs> most likely to want to be Brendan Swafford. <laughs> <laughs> Braden Horn. <laughs> You know, I don't want to be nothing like him, but <laughs> they everybody everybody harps on Randy in the polo circle, and Randy he'll always ask us, "Are you guys having fun? Are you y'all enjoying it?" And you know, nobody ever answers; they're always kind of silent. But I can say now, yes, I I was having fun while I may have been hurting, but you know, it's all right. I just I'd like to thank uh, all my my instructors, Waylon and Randy and Shane for helping me through this, and I'd like to thank the, uh, the administrative staff, make that one clear, because they like that, okay? They're not no office ladies. And then I'd like, I'd like to thank the, uh, the CDL people, Kimbra, Joe, and Keith for helping me, and I'd also like to thank Mr. David for really helping me in my faith and uh, really who I am. And same with Mr. Whalen too. Helped me through that and kind of giving us counseling every morning or every Tuesday morning. So, or Wednesday, sorry. But, <laughs> all right, thank y'all. All right, so this one was by mere, ac mere accident. Wow. Um, so what happens is we start changing the pole out. All these, everybody has to change a pole in the climbing circle, dig it, and set a brand new pole in. So they, you kind of work as a crew to do this. So, you know, it's kind of his week seven-ish, week eight. You're having a fun time. Where we're at is a lot of rock holes, so it holds water, ends up making mud. So you get one guy that thinks it's a good idea to make a little bit of mud ball and start throwing it at somebody. Usually when their heads turn, they're looking, doing this, but they're going to hit you in a hard hat with it. Or you're going to make one, and you're going to try to throw it across at Colton, at somebody facing them this way, and as soon as that comes out of your hand, they move, and it hits somebody right here. That's not expecting it. And this guy has been in the military, so he, I, I could see him. He could have, if he would have been somewhere, it wouldn't cost him a job. He would have punched somebody in the mouth. I'm pretty, pretty, pretty sure. Um, so, what time is it right now? It's uh, seven o'clock. Oh yeah. So you got some. You got time to run. Whoever threw the <laughs> mud ball. Um, so, Mike, most likely to have an assault charge on March the 18th <laughs> at 8:27 is Christopher Benton. Thank you, Shoemake, for reminding me. I still got that dog in me, but I can hold it back. 
because it was close. It was a split-second decision there. Thank you to my family, my daughter, my son, my wife, of course. Hey, baby. Uh, <laughs> thank you to my mom for letting us stay in her basement as we had just moved back to Tennessee. Uh, thank you to all our instructors. Thank you to Randy for letting me milk the clock every break talking about military stuff so that we could have one second longer to let that tiger bomb set in. Because goodness gracious, those arms be hurting. Uh, thank you to our office ladies for helping me get here. It was a pain in the butt, I know. So thank you all for dealing with me. And thank you to everybody else. Good job, Jeff. Okay, so for this next, like when we do the uh, funny superlatives things, we get a handful of students in a room, and we just start like, we go down a list of guys, and we start coming up with stuff for these superlatives. Now, there was a name that got brought up that I was really unfamiliar with. If anybody knows anything about moonshining, there's a, <laughs> there's a famous moonshiner named Popcorn Sutton, okay? Now, there's somebody in this class that people say looks like Popcorn Sutton, okay? They, they several that snickered back there yeah, in the back. They snickers, know who that guy is. Yeah. So I'm just going to show a picture before we read it. So here we go. All right. <laughs> Most likely to be Popcorn Sutton's grandchild, Reed Warren. It would be pretty cool to make some moonshine. <laughs> uh, I just want to say thank you to all the instructors, uh, all the staff. They're, every day they're there helping you, no matter what it is. They'll uh, do everything they can to help you. Uh, and I want to thank all the guys from the housing, uh, Thomas, Kevin, Connor, Braden, Brendan. Y'all made the 11 weeks pretty fun, and I'm going to miss you guys. Thank you. Okay, so this doesn't. This is a pretty short story, but it's unfortunate for him. So this guy wrecked his truck like just a day before, uh, the week before he was supposed to come to class or on the way something. I don't remember what it was. So most likely to ask for a company truck on the first day at work, <laughs> where he can just get there, is Blaze Spivey. Of course, we gave him a hard time about that, too. Yeah, um, that wasn't so good when I wrote my chart right before I came here. Uh, the, little, the little big old 18-wheeler kind of made me flip over a little bit off the highway, but I'm all good. Um, I wanted to come here and thank you, thank everybody, my classmates, everybody for coming, the office staff, and my instructors, they, they made it a good time. I didn't know how it was going to go when I got here. And it came to be the best time, best loving weeks. It, they taught me how to do everything I needed to do. And that's about it. <laughs> okay. So this next one, um, it's, it's, it's actually kind of cool giving this guy a certificate, uh, aside from making fun of him. Uh, that part is going to be fun, but it's also going to cool to see him come up on this stage, because I've known this, this kid uh, a, a long time, so uh, it's good. Um, I'm getting choked up a little bit. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but anyways, Isaac Rawls, you come to the stage real quick. Give Isaac a big hand. I'm going to read his once he comes up here. I think Stephanie needs to come right up here in front in the light with her son. Give Stephanie a big hand. You want to read it or me read it? You want to read it? Yeah. Here we go. Most likely to get... To most, not. <laughs> most likely 
to not get hired for a violation of child law. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, child child labor, labor laws. laws. <laughs> Isaac Ross. Yeah, I do look a little bit young to be uh, 18. <laughs> so uh, I definitely did learn not to ask Randy any questions first thing in the morning. <laughs> Never did that again. <laughs> but it's been an amazing 11 weeks. Uh, I'd like to thank all the guys here. Had an amazing time. Made some great friends. I'd like to thank all the staff here at Elite. All the fun times we had and all the talks. <clears throat> I couldn't have spent a greater 11 weeks. Thank you. Good job. I'm probably need some security whenever we get going because Stephanie does not like to stand up here and talk in the light. <laughs> and she's probably going to try to get me with a knife as we leave. I don't know that, but we'll see. Just watch out for him if you don't mind. Uh, okay. So this guy, these are hard. Those blaze is the same way. So we got two or three guys that just never really say anything. So you have to hear some stories, put some pieces together here and there, and there's just not a good story. But these guys up front, they're going to laugh at this, and the ones in the back, you probably don't know, and if you do, you'll laugh. But um, most likely to be on the next Jerry Springer, Blake <laughs> Allen. Oh, yeah, and he, hey, this guy did lose. You lost a bet, didn't you? It's a bet that he made. He uh, yeah, <laughs> he lost a bet that he made, and I forgot about that, and that would have been a good one. He grew back quick. He did. He shaved his beard because he lost him and uh, yeah, the other redheaded one in here that has a beard. They said, hey, I'll shave my beard if you beat me. He lost. So he, was in, he goes <laughs> down to the store, gas station, and buys a razor. And he, I come back in there, he's in the bathroom, dry shaving his face, a <laughs> little bit of water, and the water in, at the, in the classroom is not very good, and so it was pretty rough. I thought, like, what are you doing? But it grew back, so it looks good. I mean, it was just a millisecond I lost, so not that bad. Um, be a man of your word, I guess that's all I got to say. And uh, it's been fun being in this class with y'all. I've learned a lot from Elite, all the instructors, and I like to thank my family. Because without them, I wouldn't have made it to where I'm at now. That's all I got. All right, I'm going to do this one, and the chain's going to do three in a row. So uh, with this one here, um, we have already talked about this guy. Um, he is our guy who got sauced in, in uh, basketball, uh, Mr. Connor. Um, so let's, I'm going to show you all a picture. Well, Connor is from Wisconsin. So um, here's the thing. Let's, yeah. let's, let's uh, hey, uh, well, there's Wisconsin, right? There's the Wisconsin flag. There's, Con there's Connor. Now, the thing is, a lot of people say there's a facade here. He ain't really from Wisconsin, okay? <laughs> He snuck over at Canadian border, okay? <laughs> He's actually Canada Connor. <laughs> so, most likely to not be a U.S. citizen, <laughs> Connor Ostey. I'm going to start off and say I'm not that close to Canada. <laughs> not that close. I don't have the accent. <clears throat> I'd like to start off saying uh, thank you to all instructors, Shane and Randy, for teaching me everything I learned, all the office staff for helping us through or just talking through everything in general, and all the guys at the house made everything fun over the weekend. It's hard being away, but made it fun. And all the CEO instructors for helping, every, helping all of us out. And, that's all I got. Good job. Thanks for coming. Oh, 
Oh boy, I get three in a row. Uh, so this next guy, obviously you've heard that Randy's, he's, he hurts their feelings a little bit, apparently. So if I need like, if you wanted to make a donation for pacifiers and probably some baby, ba baby wipes, maybe a rocking chair. Well, I, yeah, I'll rock them. And yeah. Randy hurts her feelings, and I get to rock them and make sure they're okay. Um, so this guy, he's, and, I, and I'm all good with you telling the truth, and you've been straight up with somebody. That's why we are with these guys. We're going to tell you like it is, and hopefully you learn from it. We're not going to sugarcoat a whole lot. So most likely to be Randy in the next 30 years <laughs> is Blake Brown. So I'd just like to start off by saying thank you to this wonderful staff for being here for us all and uh, in times that we need it and just pushing us to be better um, men and uh, just uh, for Kimbra for whenever I was doing my, uh, my CDL test, we was doing the final test and uh, I didn't know nothing on that freaking truck. And so she opened the hood, and she's like, go ahead. And I was like, no, your turn. I don't know anything. <laughs> and so she got me through that and pushed us and everything. And so i just like to say thank you for all, for all these people. They don't get enough recognition. So thank you all. All right, so this next one, he's a really quiet guy. This is another one that was really hard. But one of the things that he's really known for is a really loud truck that he drives in the parking lot every day. So most likely to race in the NASCAR truck series. <laughs> Roland Welch. <laughs> most of you know him as a different name, but... He tried to make it unconfusing for us, so we went by rolling for the whole entire 11 weeks. Good job. Good job. Uh, it's not that loud. <laughs> uh, I want to thank all the instructors. Showing me a whole new line of work. There's a whole new thing that a lot of people don't even know about. Uh, Randy, you taught me how to bite my tongue in times I didn't think I could. <laughs> But I'll thank you for taking them uh, climbs off the board because uh, I know I dedicated a lot to them. <laughs> Joseph, I had fun with you with our Walmart trip. We'll just leave it at that. Um, David, you helped a lot with just self-growth and CDO instructors and the staffing in the office. Any kind of paperwork they helped. So, I mean, it was just a fun time overall. Uh, thank you. Uh, we had two in this class that actually has came, had started one class, um, had to, either got hurt, had to drop out, and then they came back this class. So this particular one had lived in California before and moved out here to the country and loves it, I think. Is that true? Okay. He's got a cowboy hat on. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so most likely to be the smartest guy in this room because he moved from California. I'm sorry if you're from California, but it's funny here. Um, Parker Cofield. Uh, I just want to say thank you to the office staff where it all started, you know. Getting involved in the school with Jordan made it really easy, you know, getting our physicals, getting everything started. Um, CDL instructors, at first we definitely didn't think we were all going to be able to get those CDLs. It was pretty stressful. Um, and then Shane and Randy, like they said, definitely never sugarcoated anything. There was times I came into the office and they'd tell me the truth straight up, even if I didn't like it, whether it was about line work or about my life, and it's made me think a lot, so... Thank you very much. And uh, 
Waylon helped me a lot. I got injured last class, and you know now I believe I it was mostly a mental battle, and he taught me a lot that I need to fight that battle no matter what. And most importantly, we learned that we got to go to work. So let's work. Okay, so let me just give you all a little what's about to happen. The, the last, I think, three or four we got, the four? Yeah. Last four. So we, like, we do serious awards, too. We've been joking a lot. These last four people are not only getting, a, getting made fun of like everybody else, <laughs> but they're also getting a serious award. We do these serious awards. Just want to give you all a little heads up how we do it. Basically, the way we did it this time is we do a little vote where they get to put a say in with each other. The CDL instructors get to say in, the instructors get to say in, and then we, we pick those, those guys. Um, so we're going to go through those. Uh, Shane's going to be saying those serious ones. I'll be doing the funny ones. Just wanted to give, give you a heads up that those are coming. So let me start here. This guy, and, and li listen, all these classes, uh, if you've ever done an application, which these guys obviously have, um, there's a thing on there for allergies, right? And we usually have allergies every now and again. This particular guy, and the most famous allergy in the world is a peanut allergy, right? And every now and again, we get a peanut allergy. This guy has a peanut allergy. Now, the problem is the doctor, this is what I've been told, okay? The doctor has told him that the EpiPen, which he has in case of something bad going down, he might be allergic to the EpiPen. <laughs> but... You won't know until he tries. I, <laughs> so that's kind of, I mean. I can, add, I can add a little bit to that story, too. Yeah, go ahead. So I had asked him. It's laying on his desk. We asked him either give it to us or at least tell everybody or have it where we know where it is. So I just walked back there. And, of course, the easy joke for us is like, you know, when you stick, stab me in the neck with it or in the leg where I'm supposed to. He said, well, I really don't know. <laughs> he said, the doctor told me I might actually be allergic to some of this stuff. I said, well. Um, what, if, do you want me to stab you with it or do you want me to like at what point do I need to stick you or do I just let you die what do I do I don't know he said I don't know so I don't know what we do so there you go that's how that story come about yeah and so his superlative is this most likely to play Russian roulette with an EpiPen <laughs> Shane Klein <laughs> hold him up hold him up for you and before you talk, we're going to say you're serious one. So, uh, so also, so since he had came back, he struggled with a little stuff mentally, I think is what kind of pushed him out the previous class or his other time that he came. You can come stand right here. I'll shake your hand in a minute. Um, but this, I think this time he can tell you and he may tell you that he has grown a lot his self. So... We gave him, and this is, this is including these guys too, so we polled these guys to kind of come up with some of these also. Um, so most improved is Mr. Shane Klein. Hey, now you can talk. Yeah, it's true. Every, everybody in the class, they were all taking bets who got to stab me with the EpiPen. <laughs> But no, I, I just want to say thank you to all the instructors. They welcomed me back with open arms when I decided to come back. And just everybody, it didn't matter if it was the office ladies, Colton, Randy, Shane, Waylon. They were all just very happy to welcome me back. And Joseph, Joseph was actually in my uh, previous class. He was in, uh, what was it, class 12? Class 12. Yep, he was in class 12 with me. And I think he was the most excited of all to see me back. And it's just, it's been some of the, I, at first I thought it was the worst 11 weeks of my life, I tell you. But... Uh, you know, going through this, I wouldn't change it for the world. I'd do it all over again, and I'm going to miss it, each and every one of these guys, each and every one of the instructors, the office staff, and I just, just want to say thank you. Okay, so... Um, this is an interesting story, um, very interesting individual we're about to bring up here, um, uh, very unique. 
And uh, I really like this guy, but this is this is was kind of a weird thing that happened the first uh, day. Of, well, actually, it wasn't the first day. It was orientation. And um, so at orientation, they're getting to meet us all and all that. And then what happens is the housing guys, they stay as everybody else leaves. And then we go over the housing rules and all that stuff. And then we split everybody up. Who's going to the, the Tunnel Hill house? Who's going to the Red Wine house? And so... I was, because I live close to the Red Wine House, I was going to take everybody over to the Red Wine House if they were staying in it. And so what happened was we, we get everybody in a circle, and there around me, the guy's going over there. And this one individual asked me, he says, so um, are there like random drug tests or anything like that? <laughs> and I was like, drug tests? You going to be doing some drugs? He says... <laughs> No, I'm thinking about doing metabolic steroids. And I was like, what do you need to be doing metabolic steroids for? So says, to get big. And I was like, dude, don't do that. But, uh, you know, so anyways, with that being said, let's show a picture here. I know, that's a lot. Most likely to be Mr. Olympia in five years, Michael Cartmill. Hang tight right there. Hang tight, Cartmill. All right. Don't let anybody see this. So I'll try to do all this without getting choked up. It's doubtful. Um, last fall in December, for those of you that, that, that were at the rodeo today, you heard this story. And we lost a really, 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 um, we lost a really close person. This class, class 15, is the only person that he hadn't talked to. And when he shows up to talk, he talked about anxiety and depression. And it's a real thing. And you've heard a lot of discussions up here about getting support mentally. Like being well is a really big thing to us. Being well here makes you well everywhere. What I'm telling you is not about Michael Cartmill. What I'm telling you is about the guy that we lost on December the 2nd. It's about Gordon Corsetti. And... When Gord Corsetti came through our program, he was 34 years old. He showed up, flip-flops, shorts, tattoos, pretty fit guy. And he said he was a web developer and he wanted to get into line work. And we were all like, mm, uh, <laughs> probably not the best route for you, right? This guy gets into line work and he literally fell in love with it. He fell in love with it. And when he graduated our program, he got the award for most personal growth because we've seen him transform. We've seen him. You've seen it with all these guys. There's a lot of these guys that walk from there to there with a different stride than they did 11 weeks ago. This guy, amazing. Amazing in how different of a person he is. Gordon Corsetti's dad is named Lou Corsetti. He was up at the rodeo speaking today. On behalf of Gordon, in his memory, what he said he wanted to do was, for the most personal growth for every class, as long as he could, he was going to donate $1,000 to that guy, Michael Cartmill. I just wanted to thank all my classmates. Uh, thank you, Blake. Thank you, uh, <laughs> Jacob. Thank you, Shane. Thank you, uh, Bailey. And thank you, uh, I th I'm missing one, aren't I? Eli, Joe Dirt over there. Yeah. <laughs> no, I appreciate you guys being there for me when uh, my car was upside down in a ditch and I was sitting <laughs> on my car calling insurance and stuff like that. You know, I was... Uh, I wasn't hurt. I thank God, you know, that I wasn't injured. I wasn't dead, and I was good, you know, playing Tetris and all that kind of stuff. But um, Gordon's story hits me really close. Uh, I was almost there with him. Uh, good. <clears throat> Sorry. I 
was, I was, I didn't think I was going to make it through a point in my life. So his story hit me really close when it came to mental health. I appreciate it. I don't know how we're supposed to follow that, um, but um, so we're going to tell jokes again. Um, yeah, yeah. So we're going to be, yeah, so we're going to be, we're going to go back to jokes. Um, so this one in particular, I'm going to go ahead and call him up. Thomas, you come to the stage, please. Okay. Yeah. Thomas, give him a big hand. Uh, Thomas is awesome. Uh, Thomas, when he came here, um, now look, you want to talk about guys growing and like, look, this is a guy getting out of his shell, like from what, you know, when he first got here, a lot more quiet than he is like right now. He'll, he'll talk to you. He'll smack talk guys. I mean, he, he's, he's that guy. And, uh, but let me tell you something. Like, just look at him. Look at him. Give him a good look. All right. Just keep doing that. Just stare at him real good. Most likely to say a million words without opening his mouth. <laughs> Thomas Bowser. All right, Shane. Okay. All right, so also, he, uh, so what he will get, um, we picked him for, he made, I think he aced every test that we gave him. 100%. All 100s on everything. Um, so just show that a little bit. And like he said, he don't say a lot. Yeah. I'll be surprised if he says a whole lot, but I know you will because you got it in you. I know you do. So what Klein has done, they gave us this. This is a little bit bigger bag than what normally a lineman would keep, but they donated it to give to somebody. So we gave him the top academic performer, so you can have that. And he also gets this bag. Got that. That's pretty sweet. You can do whatever you want to do with it, keep your tools in, or just take it home and look at it. You saw yours. Yeah, uh, that was a good joke. Uh, but, but anyways, uh, I want to thank everybody, especially these staff members. Everybody pushed me in ways that I didn't know I can. I, this, at this school, I learned to exceed my limits and push them farther. And I also learned that life just happens, you know, the good and the bad, and you just got to push through it, and uh, yeah, thank you. So our last one here. Um, so it wouldn't be an elite graduation without an old joke. So um, that's where we're going now. Um, there ain't really much to say other than that. We have our guy's oldest guy in the class. He knows who he is. I don't got to say anything other than that right there. So most likely to get a hip replacement before he makes a lineman, Heath McBee. Well, he, so in all of that, us, these guys kind of polling them and pretty, uh, you know, overwhelming about what he got. So this ends up being uh, the best overall. But in that, there is a best leader. So you could turn him loose, and I think these guys would say, wouldn't really harp only too bad, but he's going to get you going, right? He knew what things that me and Randy needed him to do. He's going to go with it, and it's probably going to get done. Okay? So that's best leader. 
Jesus. a record three serious. Yeah, birds. there's three of these serious yeah. ones. Um, so, and most encouraging. Okay, so good job. So best overall, and what he gets from Klein right here, they donated the cooler. Cooler. You Hold got, um, there's some sockets in there. Socket set. Yep, pretty sweet. You got some Klein, um, Klein earbuds. There's a little Bluetooth speaker. speaker. Yeah, the earbuds Shane mentioned, and the last thing. You need those for hearing because you're getting old. <laughs> you too? Really? Don't, this is about you, not me. <laughs> uh, yeah. This, yeah, you just be quiet. And he's got a knife. Yeah. Don't cut yourself with a knife. Yeah. Okay? So, there you go. Good Best time. overall. Congrats. I do not like doing this at all. And uh, I did not look forward to the climbs at all. <laughs> uh, thank you all. As he's coming down class 15, we all stand up together one last time. Give it up for the 15th class of the Elite Lineman Training Institute. And to close us out, Waylon Hastings. Y'all have a seat. I won't be long, I promise. Uh, give me five minutes. I know you guys are ready to be done. You've seen it. you felt it. Um, it's a... It's a it's an honor. It's a true honor to get to see these guys grow. Um, it's the, the heavy part on that is, is we know because we become so tight with these guys, a lot of the things they got going on behind the scenes. And the heavy part about that is everybody sitting behind them, you got heavy stuff too. You do. You got life. The, the, the whole deal with, with the discussion we had about Michael Cartmill getting the most personal growth is, it's amazing, and that's a hard one to choose for us because we, these guys, I told Shane Klein, Shane Klein and I had a, had a discussion, and, and Shane's from Pennsylvania, and I said, Shane, you walk different, and you don't even know how to handle how you walk, but he walks with a confidence that he's never had before in his life. And when you get to be in our shoes and see that, it's amazing honor to do that. So one of the things we are, you may have heard this later, or, or excuse me, earlier today, is we're a faith-based organization. And I want to share something with you that, that I think is appropriate for us, and, and it's what I'd like for us to leave here with. And it's one of the things that we teach these guys, and it's this idea of hope. And that's our mission as an organization, is that they leave here with hope. And I hope you've seen that come out, right? So our, our, our mission as an organization is that you begin your career with a whole lot of hope and we develop you based on biblical principles, right? So I'm going to read this to you. Most of you, not most of you, some of you may know where this comes from and I'm going to relay a message and we're going to pray and we're going to get out of here. This is scripture out of the Bible. It's real short, but I'm going to make a point with it and we're going to leave. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Listen close. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that they produce perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. All that crap you're going through, you got a lot of people around you. All these guys right here that are looking at me right now, you got a lot of support behind you. All of us got crap. We all got it. It's life. You got a lot of support around you. Leverage them. You got us as an organization. We're not going anywhere. We don't care how fast you climb. We don't care how many poles you build. We don't care if you stay in line work. We care about you. And that might sound really weird at a line school graduation, but that's who we are. Let's pray and we'll be done. Lord, we love you. We're grateful for these guys. And as an organization... We know that the hope we have is in Jesus Christ, and I pray that we never forget that. And as, as, as we part ways physically tonight, for, for all of us, we'll stay connected somehow. We know a lot of these guys, maybe even a lot of these families will come back to us. But for these families and friends and, and support that's under the sound of my voice, 
I pray for your will to be done in all their lives and for the life that's happening around us, all of us. We've all got stuff going on. I hope it don't rain our, on our emotion of, of the fun that we've had together tonight, but I hope that when we are at that spot, we look to you. You got it. It's all on you. And I pray that we always do that. Thank you for how you've blessed us as an organization. Thank you for the time spent with these young men for the last 11 weeks. We know the value of time. The last 11 weeks, nobody can get back. And we're, we're honored to be able to spend it with them and serve them. And we're very grateful as an organization. Thank you for how you've blessed us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you for coming. Hey, I'd like to add one thing just for these guys. Paula Simmons is in the back. She's with the Utility Employment Credit Union. She came all the way from Pennsylvania to support you guys, and she's got a gift. Give her, Paula, a hand. And uh, just make sure you stop by and see Paula before y'all leave so you get your gift. That's all. Y'all have a good night. Hey, folks, this is Randy from Elite Lineman Training School. I'd like to thank you for watching our video. And if you really like it and enjoy it, please hit the subscribe button down below and join us. Thank you. Have a great day.